Hey, it's uh, Mr. Moon again. Um, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to use the arithmetic properties in order to prove uh, equivalence. Uh, so you have an equation where the left side uh, set has a certain expression and it equals the right side. We want to say, using these arithmetic properties, that the left side is equivalent to the right side. So it's sort of like a proof if you've ever seen those before. Uh, up on the screen right now, I have the uh, properties that we're going to be using. Some of them we may not use, um, but all of them are available. If you notice, um, the, first, the first five, additive inverse, multiplicative inverse, commutative property, and associative property, uh, along with identity actually, so the first, the first five there, uh, all are based off of addition or multiplication only. Um, and then as you go down, you have the distributive property. The distributive property is really the only one that combines those operations. It has multiplication in it as well as addition. So it's a combination of the two operators. Um, you have the multiplicative property of zero, and, and most of you should know that, and the uh, properties of equality, that you can do the same on both sides of an equation. You can add the same amount to both sides, and you can also multiply the same amount on both sides of an equation. So uh, an example problem that we might see uh, that would use these properties to prove that two, uh, that two expressions are equivalent, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Uh, the first one that we have here uh, is 5x plus the quantity negative 4 minus 5x. Uh, and that should equal negative 4. So what we want to do is we want to turn, basically we want to turn this whole left side over here into negative 4 using the properties that I just showed you. Uh, if you need to you know, go back in this video and pause at any time or use that, go ahead and uh, then we can use the properties. There is, however, one property that wasn't there, and actually it's a definition, and it's the definition of subtraction. The definition of subtraction uh, really comes from addition. Okay, the definition of subtraction allows us to add the opposite. And in all honesty, that's the first thing we need to do. We need to make the operator addition in between all of the terms in this expression on the left. So I'm going to keep the 5x and the negative 4, but the subtraction that we have here, we want to turn that into addition of a negative 5x. That's called adding the opposite. So this subtraction sign again turned into a plus, a negative. Okay, so we added the opposite. Now, continuing on, if you look, there's a couple of terms that we'd like to get closer together. Okay, now that we have a 5x at the beginning of this, oops, we have a 5x at the beginning of the expression on the left side. And we also have a negative 5x. Now, those are additive inverses. Okay. What we'd like to do would be get this negative 5x closer to the positive 5x. So I'm going to use 5x, the commutative property here, to switch the order of the two terms in the quantity. So I'm going to put a negative 5x plus a negative 4. And again, I want to make it make that equal to negative 4 in the long run. So now that we're close, this was by the, the commutative property, and the operator that we're using is addition in this question. All the operators in between every term is addition. Okay? Uh, now what I want to do, since the parentheses tell us that we should technically do the parentheses first here. We're supposed to do that first. Uh, I would rather do, instead of that, I would rather do the 5x and the negative 5x first. Okay, so I'm going to do what's called the associative property here, and I'm going to regroup 5x plus a negative 5x. And I still have my negative 4, but it's no longer part of the quantity anymore. Now we're allowed to do this because of the associative property. And we're still in addition. OK? 
Okay. Now, by definition, again, another property here, 5x plus a negative 5x, most of you are quick to say, well, they're like terms, and that sum is 0. Um, but by definition, it's also a property. And the property, 5x plus a negative 5x, is that they are additive inverses. Okay? Lastly, we know 0 plus negative 4. And I'm sure you do. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4, which then does prove negative 4 equals negative 4, that the left side does equal the right side. Um, however, that's also, 0 plus negative 4 is also a property. If I add 0 to something, I return that same number. That's called the identity. There's two identities. There's an identity of addition, and that's what we're in right now. We're in addition. And actually, this question was completely in addition. All of them were uh, properties of addition. Okay, so that's an example where, um, again, we can use those properties to prove the left side of an equation equals the right side, or vice versa. Uh, if we keep going, that was in addition. If we take a look at another one that's um, in multiplication, we can use those properties as well. Um, the first thing I would see on the left-hand side here is that we don't have multiplication completely from left to right on that left hand side. We do have division, but there's again a definition of division. That means we can change division into multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. And if we do that, if we turn this, instead of being divided by 6b into multiplying by the reciprocal and the reciprocal of 6b is 1 over 6b okay what this is going to allow us to do is then use those properties since there are properties of multiplication as well now I would like to get I would like to get this 1 over 6b and the 18b squared I would like to get those two factors in this product closer together, okay? Right now we have uh, 18b squared times 3 in the quantity. And I, I, I'm going to use the commutative property here first to switch the order of those. And that will begin to get the 18b squared closer to the 1 over 6b. And that is the commutative property. Now our operator this time is multiplication, okay? From here, I would like to, instead of do 3 times 18 b squared, we could, we could do 3 times 18, but instead I'd like to do this 18 b squared times, I'd like to do this times the 1 over 6 b if I can. So. I can take and drop the parentheses and use the associative property to regroup, okay? Basically just remove the parentheses where they are and put them where we would like to put them, okay? And again, this is something that only works as long as there's multiplication in between all the factors in the expression. And I'll show you that there is clearly multiplication in between all of the factors each one of those being a factor. Now, if we remember correctly, 18b squared is the same as 18b squared over 1, and we can take out some factors. We can actually take out a common 6b from the, po the bottom and the top of this fraction. So if I take out a common 6b uh, in the numerator here, that would leave me with 3b. And 6b, if I take a 6b out of that, if I divide 6b by 6b, I just get a 1. Okay, so I did some factoring there. And now I'm going to rewrite my left-hand side. Three times, well, that's just going to be 3b over 1 inside the parentheses. Remember, when you multiply fractions, you go straight across. So three times 3b over 1, or just 3b. And that should equal 9b. Uh, oops, I forgot to write the associative property here. And that's of 
multiplication back there. And now, well, really all we did was multiply factors. in this line. We just did the 18b squared times 1 over 6b. Now we're going to multiply factors yet one more time and get 9b equals 9b. So we did use the same rule uh, twice. Now these multiplying factors here, they are not on the arithmetic property list that I put up earlier, but they're definitely going to occur. Sometimes you, could, you might even use uh, something like combine like terms Remember, terms are separated by addition or subtraction. Uh, and if you had to add or subtract any like terms, that's what you would put there. Um, you may have to multiply factors. Factors are separated by multiplication. So that's what happened in this one. Okay? But notice how, again, we took the whole left-hand side of this uh, equation and ended up making it equal the right side by using these properties step by step. I uh, hope this helps. Uh, if it doesn't uh, and you still have some further questions, uh, please you can uh, bring your questions to class or you can post on this on the actual video itself.